Hey there, and welcome back to the cafe, and welcome if you're new. One of the things I'm always thinking about with collage art is how to have new and exciting papers. And one of the papers I absolutely love to use in collage are watercolor background papers. But the problem with watercolor background papers is they're really thick. They're so thick that it can become very difficult to work with. So I decided to make a batch of these watercolor background papers, scan them, and turn them into a paper kit so that I could print them whenever I want to use them and then of course you can just throw a coat of matte medium over top using your jelly plate if you're doing an inkjet print or you could just use a laser print and paint right on top of it or stitch right on top of it whatever you want but I've been wanting these to add to my collage artwork for a long time so I've made a few which I'm going to show you in a minute and then of course I'm going to do a quick little demo to show you how I do mine. So what I used for these papers are my little Prima watercolor sets. I've used this woodland set here and I've only used a few colors out of these. I've used the Sand Ridge color, Shadow, Graystone, Mist, and bare and then you know I did different combinations of these colors and then I also used my Prima Odyssey set these are great little sets and Hobby Lobby used to carry these but sadly I think they don't I, I have not seen them for a long time there so you'll have to hunt around online now out of this set I've used a bit of the Jordan color the Cusco color the Budapest and the ink uh, out of this set here so I didn't use too many but um, the combinations I came up with I really like now another product I really love to use is this tattered angels color wash tint this is a um, it's a great stain tinting um, product and it is water-based but I have noticed when you try to rework it you cannot rework this like you can watercolor at least not as easily and then this color is French roast and I love to have the bottle but I also made a couple dropper bottles of a couple different colors I have I also have the black velvet in this same color wash tint product so this just makes it a little easier to pour it out onto my plate and water it down or do whatever I'm going to do with it. Now the next thing I used on this that I absolutely love to use is white gouache and I got mine on eBay so it's just a nice little squishy packet full jam-packed full of white gouache paint and I love this for spattering on watercolor. So that's that and then I did want to show you this. These are just pieces is a poster board and I picked these up at Walmart is where I've seen them and they're in these packs of this size which I'm not sure I think these are like 11 by 14 size but they're a really nice size to be able to tape your watercolor project down to now some of these I just put on a piece of poster board that's very messy. I did a bunch of these that were not on film and I just used my messy poster board and I did not tape them down at all. So you have options, you can do either way. Now the thing about taping down, and I am gonna go all over all these and um, individually too, is you get your beautiful border. So it really depends on whether or not you want a border with these. You can just do it real loose and not tape them down and take your paint all the way to the edges. Now, the thing about all of these, especially these ones that I did not tape down, you will need to iron them over. So 
So let's go ahead and go through what I've got here. I did a really nice little batch and I went ahead and made these into a paper kit. So if you're not interested in uh, doing these watercolor pages yourself, but you still want to use them in your artwork, you can grab mine. I went ahead and put the link down below. And another thing about that, if you're interested in certain color combos or certain levels of intensity, I've got to say this whole batch I did very intense and I'm planning on making lighter batches too. So when I do those, I'm not gonna show how to do it because I've already shown, I'll just link this video with the demo, but I will do flip throughs as I make these papers so you can see what I've got. But if you want a certain color scheme or you want a certain paper pack and you don't wanna make them, just let me know in the comments section below. And a couple other things, what do you like for collage paper? Paper. What are the papers that you just can't stop thinking about? I'd really love to know. Watercolor is one of those for me. And do you like collage? Are you into it? Have you caught the bug? If you have, this is a great place to be. So here's the first one that I did. And I, I have a lot of spatter on most of these that I've done here. I really like that look. I plan on making some more that are much more subtle than these. But the beauty of making these dark like this is when you print it and you use it in your collage work, if you want to paint over it, you can push a lot of this color back. So I wanted them to start off uh, very bold and graphic at first because you can always play with the intensity later. But I love the look of really soft watercolor too. Now, at the end of this video, after the demo, I'm gonna go through each one of these. I'm just gonna show it quickly. Uh, so we're not here forever. And then on the other side, I have all the colors and what kind of paper. Oh, and that reminds me to let you know, I used three different kinds of paper. Paper. Let me grab those and show you. I was getting everything together for this video and I was like, I know I'm forgetting something. What is it? Well, it was the paper. It's always something, right? So uh, what I used on these, I used three different kinds of paper just to play around and see if I really noticed a difference, which I've got to say I did not. Not even with a very expensive brand versus less expensive brands. So that's kind of encouraging to me. Now I've got my Canson watercolor paper. This is something, one of my go-to papers. And all the papers I used today were nine by 12. So I did not cut any of them down. I just taped a few off and then I did the rest, as you saw, all the way to the border. So some of them are Canson. And at the end of the video, I have written at the top of each paper what kind of paper it is, if you're really wanting to know or concerned about it. Now also, all the papers I've used, in addition to them being nine by 12, are cold pressed paper. So the weight on this is 140 pound. The weight on the Canson is 140 pound. And then I used this and I was actually extremely pleasantly surprised. This is Artist's Loft watercolor paper. Same thing, 140 pound, nine by 12, cold pressed paper. So, um, and the, the difference between the cold press and the hot press is just uh, cold press has texture and hot press is very smooth. So those are the papers I used. And I've got to say, I use this one the most and I, I was really happy with it. I was just fine with the results I've got. Now I'm not working in detail on these. They're strictly background. So there is that. If you're working detail and you need a smooth paper, you definitely want to spring for the hot press. I really don't. I don't know. I know everybody just drools over arches and I get it. But for these backgrounds, I honestly did not notice a difference. Now I do write in cursive. So the artist loft is the paper and then I wrote the colors down for you. And then I used coffee in a lot of these and white gouache. So this one actually did not have white gouache. I meant to use it and I liked it so much that uh, I didn't. 
I didn't pull it out. I really like the way it came out without it. So everything else is correct. I promise, I promise. But when you get to this really colorful one, uh, no, gua no white gouache on that one. Here's some more. I love this uh, purple brown color combo and this one's got some gray in it. I really enjoy these colors together and it's so fun to explore different colors it's such a great time so you know definitely let me know if you want some paper kits that are certain color schemes i am game for making them so you can leave that down in the comment section below now these three right here are the ones i taped off to the poster board i had shown you earlier and it's just a different look it's fun i'm not using Using these for art in and of themselves so I prefer to have the borderless work but uh, when I started them I really wanted to do the demos uh, nice and really together for you so I thought it would be cool to do the borders and I didn't want you to have to deal with that messy busy background but that is gonna come up in the future because I just you know how it is. We get so much media on our backgrounds and sometimes you just gotta look at it to make the artwork and it's all good. <laughs> I don't know, it's one of those silly little things. It's like, ah, do I keep buying poster board or do I use what I have? I'd really rather just use what I have. So here's the last one. And remember, I'm gonna quickly show you the piece and then show you all the uh, information at the end of the demo, and then you can go ahead and make some of these yourself. Enjoy.